Hello friends. Today we are going to discuss about hallucinations. My name is Dr. Vijay Bhatia. I am a psychiatrist. What is hallucination? Hallucination is a perception without an object. That means there is no stimulus present and the person either see things that are not there or hear things that are not there or even feel on the body with the skin when things are not there. A false perception, which is not a sensory distortion or a misinterpretation, but which occurs at the same time as a real perception. When we say it's a false perception, that means it's not real. That means there is no object external present, there is no stimulus, and it is not a sensory deception or distortion because in terms of sensory distortion, you see something, but then you interpret it differently or it looks slightly different. Let's say there is a rope there and you might think that is just a snake or if there is misinterpretation, there is something there and it looks slightly different like rail lines that they are, it seems like that they're going to join ultimately when they in fact never join. So that is example of misinterpretation or distortion uh, when rope is there and the person feels that it's a snake or something. So what distinguishes hallucination from true perception? Hallucinations are perceived as coming from within. That means subjectively, inside, inside my head, inside my body. Although the subject reacts to them as if they were perceptions coming from outside, from without. This distinguishes them from vivid mental images that also come from within, but are recognized as such. So if a person is seeing a vivid mental image, but he knows that it is coming from his own imagination, then it is not hallucination, it is just his mental, mental image. Whereas in hallucination, the person believes that they are coming from outside as if they are real. So true perceptions, they are substantial, tangible. You can feel them, they are real. You can touch them, other people can tell. Appear in objective space, that means outside our body. It's not just in my head. Are clearly delineated, delineated. that means they have a clear boundary between what is next to it and it is quite clear object outside. And it is constant. I don't have to be there, but the object will be still there and can be perceived by other people. And it is independent of the will. It is not in my will to bring that image whenever I want, if it is a true perception that will be there, even if I don't want that to be there. And sensory elements are full and fresh. That means there is a feeling of real object outside there. But in mental images, what happens? The image is not very complete. It is either half or uh, image is not very clear. It might be looking like a shadow or dark or some uh, light, something not very complete. Are not clearly delineated. That means they don't have clear outline, clear shape or clear uh, as a difference from the surrounding are dependent on the will. So mental images, I can bring them whenever I want. Let's say I'm looking at the cloud and I can say, I can see a face or a horse and that is in my will. Oh, no, it's not. Exist in subjective space. So mental images, they exist in my mind. I can bring them, I can uh, take them away. 
are inconstant, that means they are not constant. They, 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 I can bring them when I want them and have to be recreated. If I want to bring them back, I have to look at the cloud again and think, oh no, there is, I can see the face. What are pseudo hallucinations? Pseudo hallucinations, they are type of mental image. That means they are inside you, inside your mind, but they are very clear vivid, but they also lack the substantiality of perceptions. They are seen in full consciousness and they are known to be not real perceptions. So we know them that it is, the person is telling me, I am hearing a voice, but it is inside my head. I can't make out it's a male or female or clear or not clear. Uh, that's how they feel to the person, but it sounds that, you know, it, it might be there, somebody has to be there. They are located in objective space, right? So they are outside, but in subjective space. They are, sorry, they are not located in objective space. They are not outside the body, but they are inside the body, like inside the head. Like true hallucinations, they are involuntary. They are not in our control. So the voices will keep on coming despite the person saying, I don't want them. They are bad, they are not good. Uh, so person do not have any control. That's what they're called pseudo hallucinations. Pseudo means false, by the way. Pseudo hallucinations can be identified in the auditory. That means hearing with the ears, tactile on the skin. You can feel, touch, pain. Uh, vibration senses, and uh, they, they can be in the visual modality. That means you can see them with the eyes. The person is saying that I can see certain things. Causes of hallucinations. There are a number of causes of hallucinations, and they can be result of, number one, intense emotion. If you are highly, highly intense in emotions, it can happen in religious ceremonies. Um, where where people can start imagining thing that things are happening around them when nothing is happening. It can happen in psychiatric disorders, especially schizophrenia. It can happen in psychotic depression, mania, and other illnesses. Or they may even happen on suggestion as in some kind of hypnotherapy. And uh, if there is a disorder of the sense organs, uh, like somebody's blind and they still see that I can see very clearly, I can see the whole cinema, the images and everything. And that can happen in blind people like Charles Bonnet syndrome. And there are other syndromes where people can see when there are disorders of the sense organs. It can happen in sensory deprivation. Examples are given that when people have been left in dark for days and days, and within a couple of hours or a couple of days, they start actually hallucinating, imagining real sunlight is coming or real objects are appearing in front of them. It can also happen in disorders of central nervous system like epilepsy. In epilepsy, sometimes they feel or they can smell something like burning rubber or something, or they see certain flashing lights uh, in front of them before epileptic seizure. In acute confusion, delirium, any kind of infection that is affecting the brain function, the brain will start imagining things and a number of hallucinations can happen in the visual, auditory, tactile. Alcohol withdrawal is very well known. This is delirium tremens. Person can start seeing things, hearing things, especially <coughs> something is known about this is Lilliputian or everything is very small, people are small. It can happen in uh, Ill illicit drugs like ecstasy, um, and they, they are called hallucinogenic drugs, amphetamines, LSD, number of <coughs> other drugs. They can cause hallucinations. Hallucinations can happen in severe depression. When person is really depressed and also has delusions of guilt, delusions of false beliefs, which are held by the person against any evidence or and they are very much convinced that that is the case. And uh, guilt is that they have something done something wrong, which may 
they have not done and even if they have done something mild, but they believe strongly it is going to cause major problems to themselves or to the others. And they may start hearing voices which are mostly reproaching them, telling them of why did you do that? What happened? You are a bad person or something like that. It can happen in, when people are very depressed. They are not the continuous voices of paranoid schizophrenia. Now, in depression, what happens is uh, uh, they get single words or short phrases like rot, go and kill yourself, you are a bad person. They are not continuous voices, which are more characteristic of illnesses like paranoid schizophrenia or organic hallucinosis, uh, like in uh, uh, alcohol problems. Uh, but they tend to be disjointed or fragmentary in depression. <coughs> Hallucinations in paranoid schizophrenia, or on the other hand, are often persecutory in nature, uh, as if somebody is following you, somebody is trying to do harm to you, uh, somebody will chase you, and somebody will kill you. Uh, they are normally very persecutory in nature. They may consist of voices giving a running commentary on the person's actions. So if the person is walking or coming downstairs, the voices are telling him, now Mr. So-and-so is coming down or going in the kitchen or is eating this. So they are like a running commentary. And sometimes the voices can be quite hostile in manner. They will be telling the person, you are bad, you are not doing good. And these are normally third person hallucinations. So sometimes in third person hallucinations, two people are talking among themselves about the person, about the patient. So now this is the person and the, these are the two people, different people. And so they talk about the, about the third person. Uh, so which third person in our case is our uh, patient. And uh, they can command you to do things that you don't want to do, like go and pick up this, go and do this, go and hurt somebody, go and break something. So these can be in the paranoid schizophrenia. What is the differential diagnosis of schizophrenia or, or hallucinations? So we are saying that hallucinations are the uh, 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 perceptions without any stimulus, without any object present they can happen in. So differential diagnosis will be illusions. Illusions meaning that we see something but perceive it slightly differently. Like if I see a, 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 a rope and I might think it looks like it looks like a snake curled up or I might see in the cloud uh, and I can see, oh, there's eyes there and there's a face there or some kind of face. So that is the real thing is there, but you are misinterpreting it as slightly different. And that gives you an illusion. Pseudo hallucinations, as we've discussed, they are inside your head and they are, uh, they appear very much like true hallucinations and, but they are inside in, in the subjective space. Hypnagogic hallucinations, when we are going to sleep, it is twilight and people are slightly muddled up and they start seeing things or hearing things that are not there. They are called hypnagogic hallucinations. They are normal and we shouldn't be worrying about them. Hypnopompic, similarly, when we are waking up in the morning, mind is still not fully awake and we might hear our voice or somebody calling my name or and the, again, these can be normal. We don't have to worry too much about them. Uh, vivid imagery, when you are sitting down and having a real fantasy of seeing something uh, when there is nothing there. And it can be differentiated from even normal perception. It is very hard, in fact, to differentiate from uh, and the normal perception because both hallucinations and normal perceptions are very real to the person happening because they are in the outside objective space and we believe it strongly they are real. Uh, uh, only difference in hallucination is that they, they are 
not seen by other people, but in normal perception, everyone else can see as well. The, or is the experience is a delusion? Sometimes what happens is the person is telling me that people are talking about them. But we know when the reality is the patient does not hear others talking about uh, himself, but believe that they do. So this is not hallucination. This is something a belief that other people are talking about him and that is delusional. That means it's a false belief. And so we need to differentiate. Thanks for watching the, this video. I have made other videos on the perception, including auditory hallucinations, visual hallucinations, and the normal perception. Uh, I will be grateful if you please watch them. If you like this, please press the like button and also please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.